from Chicago's Can TV. A look at the week's events is reported in the newspapers, in the blogs and online, and on radio and TV. This is Chicago Newsroom. Well, hi there. Welcome to the show. So it was a sprawling, ambitious media project. CNN's Chicagoland just wrapped up eight hours of high-def video shot mostly over the summer last year. Not sure how many people actually watched it, but it did have some of the prettiest pictures of Chicago you're ever going to see, and some really depressing footage of Chicago at its worst with shootings and mayhem and political strife. But last week, the Tribune revealed something many of us had kind of suspected all along, that there was a high level of communication between the producers of the show and the mayor's office that could be interpreted as a pro emmanuel bias. I would interpret it that way anyway. Something that could explain the uneasy feeling you get when you watch the show and there are so many of those warm shots of the mayor hugging little children. Bill Ruthart wrote that story for the Chicago Tribune, and I'm happy to say that Bill's with us again today. Welcome back to the show again. He's joining us. Richard Steele's also joining us. He's an old friend. He's been on the radio in Chicago for decades, playing a lot of great music and talking to a lot of listeners about a lot of things over a lot of years. And Richard, I'm so glad you're finally on Chicago Newsroom. Good Welcome. to be here. And uh, we've also got a CPS high school, or, 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 I'm sorry, a, a, a teacher from uh, Chicago who uh, who's, uh, runs the uh, White Rhino blog. Ray Salazar is here. I got confused there for a second, but he's here with us, and I'm really glad he's here. Thank you. Uh, because he's had a few pithy reactions to the series. And a guy named Rick Kogan, who I, I've I'm never, the CPS teacher. I've never, heard of, <laughs> I've never heard of him or met him before today, but we'll see what, what well, It's about is. time I'm on. Yeah, right. We run into Rick, each other. you got to come on. Right, come I know. On. We've been talking about it for over a year. So sh Rick Kogan is finally here. Glad Print, to be here. radio, media, and the founder of Media Creatures, it needs to be said, right? One of the, the founders, legendary, the legendary, legendary media, creatures. media Creatures. I gotta tell you, I wanted to mention Media Creatures on the show today, and I looked it up this morning and was appalled and shocked to find out that that was only on the air for like eight months or something. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I spacious, thought it was. I, that's the nature of modern day mass communications. Yes, eight months seems like a long time to me now. I know, but I mean, I w if you had asked me, I would have said it was on for like four years. Thank you. I, I mean, I, I don't know if that's a compliment or not. My bank account could yeah, say the same right, thing. Right. Anyway, uh, media people all. I, we can't call ourselves media creatures because he's got that copyrighted, but we are all media people and with a history of media. So, Bill, am I, am I being unfair to the mayor to say that that series really did look like it had been well coordinated with the mayor's office. Well, more than 700 emails we obtained from the mayor's office show that it was closely coordinated with the producers. Many of the scenes were uh, a lot of messages back and forth about specifically making sure the mayor goes to Fanger High School to visit Liz Dozier, setting up time for him to mentor uh, a young uh, African-American high school student in his office. Uh, they talked about wanting to see him in his SUV on his cell phone, which if you watch Chicagoland, just about every single episode features the mayor in his SUV on his cell phone. <laughs> and his flip phone. And his flip phone, right. and that, that right. caused a stir of its own. Right. Um, so the emails show the producers asking for these things to happen, the mayor's senior aides working to make them happen, and then there's the nature of the emails. When they're asking for these things, they're saying how, you know, we want to present the mayor as a star that he really is. We want to. Uh, I have some of them written down. You know, here. we yeah. think the school closings is a great opportunity to to, dis, to display his leadership. Uh, so, you know, certainly, you know, when you read the emails, there seems to be a clear intent to make the mayor look good. I like the part about we need conversations between the mayor and one of his close advisors, like you, David, who's his one of one of his people in his office, with Barbara Bird Bennett, the woman at the helm of the mayor's historic education reform agenda, with Superintendent McCarthy fighting to keep the crime rate down at the beginning of Chicago summer season. That's that's the kind of stuff that they're really laying it on pretty thick, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, I I think we've all been in some of these situations before. When you want to try to get somebody important, you have to kind of lay it on a little thick, I suppose. But well, yeah, I mean, if you're a producer or a newspaper photographer, you don't go into a situation saying, you know what, I want 20 minutes with you for an interview because I want to really make you look bad. Yeah. I want to show you yeah. for the right. idiot that I really think you are. Right. Right. This is, right. Bill's piece was unbelievable. Uh, that's why so many people are talking about it, because it, it pulled the curtain back about how much of media is manipulative. Mm -hmm. 
and manipulative, especially a series like this. This is Hollywood, oh, we love you, you're the hero of the show. There's no doubt, I mean, all you agree, Rahm Emanuel is a star. Name four of the mayors in the United right. States of America. Right, right, He's right. a star because of his Obama connection, because of his work in Washington, because of his foul Be mouth, I think, Because also. of his intense fight to make Chicago a better place. That too, right? You know, but look, the re guys, let's don't get this twisted. The reality is, when he agreed to do this, does anybody sitting here think that Rahm Emanuel would give them access like that without knowing the outcome at the end of the day? I mean... This is a guy who's politically as politically astute as anybody you can think of, and he's not going to take a chance on some, as Rick is pointing out, some image thing that's going to come out not in his favor. That that's not reasonable to even believe that. I don't and, think anybody believes that. And, and that's why I think the CNN creator should not have called the show a docu series or, or any type of documentary like because it wasn't. It was a reality series that was contrived. Any Chicagoan, I mean, we talked to my friends after watching the first couple of episodes. Any native Chicagoan knew that something was just not right with the show. From the very <laughs> it's like, where is this place? And, and I remember, where is this place? I remember the first time that I saw the big posters. They started putting up the posters yeah. around, and you saw the three heads: McCarthy yeah. and Dozier and, 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 and Manuel, and they looked like some type of superhero. And I thought, yeah. okay, something is not going to be yeah, yeah, natural yeah. about this. Well, obviously, the, the, you know, the re those two people represent the two areas that are the most troublesome for Chicago right now, the schools and education mm -hmm. and crime mm -hmm. and violent crime. So you've got McCarthy at, at the one head and, uh, you know, Liz Dozier, uh, mm -hmm. who is a very impressive young woman. Yeah, I mean, I've, no known Liz for, I've known Liz for a long time, and she is very, very impressive. One of the problems with this series is I think they glommed on to the mayor, because yeah. he is the mayor of the Chicago. There's a star. They had known Gary McCarthy from a previous documentary they did in Newark about Gary yeah, and yeah. Cory Booker. Mm -hmm. I think somehow, maybe the mayor, maybe one of the many, many sort of talent scouts they had on the ground here said, hey, this woman at Finger is really interesting mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. They glommed onto them. Those became the main storylines throughout the whole thing. Right. You know, you don't need a fake alarm and finger to spend five minutes when it might have been spent somewhere else, at some other school, yeah. at some other interesting place. They glommed onto those storylines and they stuck with them. And frankly, I, I had had enough of them by about the fifth episode. It's interesting you mentioned the storylines because there's an email exchange early right, on right, where right. the mayor's office uh, is saying, we'll be suggesting characters and storylines. And this, the producer's saying, we're looking forward to receiving your suggestions. and. Uh, a lot of those messages ended up being redacted, so we couldn't read the attachment labeled characters, you know. Yeah. But there was a message uh, to uh, CPS from the producers saying, uh, you know, we want to get going at Finger High School. The mayor's office is on board with this, which suggested that, you know, that had been cleared and well, they no were question. ready to go. Right? No question. So. As, we, as we all know, if you want to take, you cannot just show up at places with a sure. film crew right. and knock on the door and right. say, hi, we're right. here. Right. Right. It cannot be done. Well, there were so many places, uh, as somebody who, you know, we've all worked in this business before. As I said, we've worked on both sides of this. And, and I, as many of our viewers know, I actually worked for the city for a while doing video. So I know a little something about this. And you cannot get shots like the mayor calling the principal, just calling some principal at some oh, that high was, school. Uh, that was, <laughs> and, that and, was on both yeah, ends. Yeah, that was both ends. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, that was <laughs> purely right. by accident. Yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. cannot get shots like having the people at two of the schools that ended up not being closed when right. there were 53 right. on, the, on, the shop, on the chopping blocks, which of course, I know you can't answer this, but you raised the question of whether or not someone in, I mean, you didn't raise the question, but your article caused the question to be raised of whether or not someone in the mayor's office didn't already know that Menier and um, named just Garvey, 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 Garvey yeah. were not going to get closed, and that's why they wanted to make sure that there were cameras there when the announcement well, was made. It, or it could be the other way around, that they found out the CNN crews were following those two schools. Well, and, that would be even that worse. That would be even worse, uh, right? So, uh, but, you know, we tried to ask, think we tried about to ask is this just a coincidence? You know, we asked the mayor's office, can you explain how this happened? Mm -hmm. You know, and no response. And even the producers say, you know, we were following these two schools. I'll we, give you the We quote. got in with some parents, and so we were wondering... Uh, you know how that came to be too. You asked the you asked the producers how could it possibly be that you were at the two school at two of the schools that didn't right. close, and uh, Levin said, um, "Well, we don't have the answer to that, but we did go. Wow, that's unusual." Right. 
And well, look, look, I mean, this is a document. Well, maybe it isn't a documentary, <laughs> nah. but it, it is a it is a film that. Are we saying that had it been described as something other than a documentary, maybe that we it would be more acceptable in terms no. of how it turned out? No. But if we say it's a documentary that sort of actually documents what happens in Chicago, what the results are, what the outcome, uh, uh, what the problems are, uh, this didn't quite get that. But if you call it something else, then it was a film about Chicago, and so it's I, okay. I think it reminds me of the old saying, write about what you know. And it was obvious that the people making the show did not know Chicago because they took on a superficial look uh, at our neighborhoods. And if people living outside of Chicago watch this show, they would think that our city is made up of a white neighborhood and a black neighborhood. And there's some Latinos kind of in the middle who apparently have a pretty good life in Little Village. <laughs> uh, I mean, you mentioned the, the, the lack of attention that Rob Castaneda Yo, got absolutely. in, in, that, in absolutely. that piece. Absolutely. I lived for 30 years. I lived a few blocks away from Rob's house. He has a, a, a park program now, Beyond the Ball. He helps young people you know, uh, deal with the violence in Little Village. And I remember driving by his house many times and seeing the, the burn marks from sure. when the gangbangers set his, his door on fire because he was speaking up against them. And yet it seems like everything is fine in Little Village. We saw an undocumented immigrant, uh, J.P. Marquez, if I remember correctly. It seemed like his life was fine. He's sure he's undocumented. He runs the risk of being deported, but he's fine. And so what we take away from that show is this understanding that apparently on the north side, nothing bad happens because even after the Hawks won the championship, there were no fights. People were drinking and partying out in the streets, but not one Clark 911 there were no call, windows not one fight, Street. nothing right. broken, right. Right. and that's just not believable. Yeah. So you're right, because the superficial nature of it, if they did those, that couple who is doing wonderful work in Little Village, you got from the show, if you're just a viewer, yeah. no idea of who they were, yeah. what they were doing, and what effect it had, but right. for the fact that the camera crew followed them to New York, yeah where yeah. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar yeah, yeah. made a speech. Yeah. Whitney and they, Marcellus was playing. Right. And they yeah, got right. some kind of award. I'm yeah. saying, okay, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, another yeah, woman, yeah. Sally Hazelgrove, mm -hmm. who seems a fascinating character, a white, excuse me, Sally, if you aren't, 50-something. So the boxing thing? The bo woman yeah. teaching young people to box yeah. in Englewood and having moved to Englewood and saying to the camera, well, I used to be a thief and I used to carry a gun. And I'm like, you did. <laughs> Where's the documentary? I want more about yeah. that, right? Yeah. yeah. Do, do yeah. you remember the the? I think it was in episode two or episode three. There was a shooting in Englewood, and so there they have the footage of the funeral happening in Englewood, and then mm -hmm. Fenger High School has a peace march happening mm -hmm. at the same time, mm -hmm. and the editing made it look like the peace march was happening blocks away from that Englewood yeah. funeral. Mm -hmm. We know as native yeah. Chicagoans yeah. that Englewood and Roseland right, are right. very different totally. places, yeah. Yeah. and it's just unfair to communicate the idea that somehow mm -hmm. the peace march at finger is somehow related and going to have an effect on what's happening See, in England. We've all watched it. Can, can I bring something up and ask Bill because he was there and his stories. There's three and talk shows on stories, the talk show <laughs> <on> the <laughs> today. Yeah. The story is in the paper today in which he quotes the mayor of the city of Chicago saying, I haven't seen the show. I find that either disingenuous mm -hmm. and or ridiculous. <laughs> if he didn't see the show, if he didn't see the show, I would ask, where is your sense of curiosity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This crew was here. This is a national show mm -hmm. focusing on the town of which you are the mayor and you didn't mm -hmm. find the time to see the show. Or if you've been debriefed from your people, I think he did it. So he didn't have to address anything in that mm -hmm. show. What was your, I know you can't he's, cover he's, it. He's, I mean, he's clearly trying to distance himself from the issue. Uh, when, the, when the first, episode aired, he was asked if he saw it and said no. Uh, we know from emails that, that the mayor's office asked for a private screening before it aired at Sundance. Tara Cooper, the press secretary, asking if the mayor could watch it. But CNN says that never happened. Um, but when I first asked the producer, he couldn't remember. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, we'll take them at their word. But there certainly was a level of curiosity then. And so, to you know, I know the mayor gets briefed on every story and every newscast and they produce reports for him. So. It's possible that, that, that that's how he was informed about it. But yeah, you gotta wonder, why not watch at least some of it, right? Well, that came up in, uh, uh, you know, uh, WBEZ when, uh, when mm -hmm. he was on the radio, he called in at the end of a You guys did show, a whole thing, a whole thing right after he Bill's piece to it came out. Right? And called in with some comments at the end. And uh, that was one of the things he made a point of saying that <coughs> we didn't hear anything from City Hall at all. We didn't hear, we don't know what their thoughts are because we, Nobody said anything. Mm -hmm. Nobody commented. Mm -hmm. That's kind of hard to believe. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and it makes me wonder, who was this show 
four. Call it a documentary series, call it a docu-series, reality show, whatever. What was the purpose of this text, mm -hmm. if you will? Mm -hmm. And as for native Chicagoans, we watched it and we said, well, that's not really our Chicago in its entirety. I mean, you brought up things that, that they should have covered, the Billy Goat Tavern and the history there. Well, also, no, the Billy Goat's almost a cliche yeah. now. I mean, yeah. I literally was getting so much, I wanted to see Ronnie Woo Woo Wickers <laughs> for 10 minutes. Yeah. I said, if you're going to do oh, this, why don't, why, don't, why don't you really yeah. lay it on thick? And, and I wonder why they didn't cover the changes that have happened in our city with gentrification over mm -hmm. the years. Right, what are the, right. what what effects yeah. have gentrification had on yeah. our city? And, and that was all missing. I mean, yeah. I, 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 Okay, we're, we're hanging too much on this Christmas tree. I understand that even in eight hours you can't deal with these things. But True. there is the there is the overarching issue of how easy it is to um, portray gun violence, for example. You can say, oh, Englewood is racked with gun violence. But if, if you are going to do eight hours on the city of Chicago and you're not going to talk about the historic disinvestment in these mm -hmm. communities, Absolutely. if you're not going to talk about the, the, uh, the institutional racism that, yeah. has, that, has, that has abandoned entire sections of our city and like, cut them out from the economic heart mm -hmm. of the... Mm -hmm. and, and then these things happen. Right. If you're not going to try to put that in some kind of context, then you're not doing anybody a service. Right. And you know what else they did is it was interesting that every time there was a shooting or a tragedy or financial crisis at the school, they slip in a minimal solution mm -hmm. that somehow calms us as viewers and you makes us that, huh? yeah. makes us feel like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's horrible. And then there was but a shot somebody's of, doing right. something about and then it. There was a shot of, of the mayor um, somehow addressing part of that situation right. or somebody else connected to yes. the administration. He jumps in the right. SUV. There's always, and, yeah, there's always yeah. a, there was yeah. that, and then there's the other thing about this is what we're doing, though. Right, right, right. 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 Yeah. And so I couldn't figure out if this is a well-intentioned piece that is supposed to engage people who have the power and the finances and the influence to improve our city mm -hmm. and neighborhoods like Little Village and Roseland. They're not moved to act. That's right. All, and and yeah. what they are moved to do is just throw money at the problem. Mm -hmm. right. Juanita mm -hmm. Jordan donates, what was it, $75,000? 38000 38000 well, I, yeah. I guess yeah. wishful yeah. thinking, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking, I, I sent Billy Deck a tweet the night of the, the, the last show, and you know he was sending out tweets, donate to Fenger, donate to Fenger, and I said, as well-intentioned as you are, you are not addressing the cause of what's happening, what you talked mm -hmm. about. Look at what's happening to the communities around a lot of these struggling schools. Mm -hmm. That's what needs attention. We can throw money at the problem, and that'll yeah. save Fenger's yeah. budget for a year, yeah. and open next year, same open problem. Open a nightclub in Englewood. Open a business yeah. but in do you Roseland. Think, but do you think yeah. anything w was done right? I mean, is there anything about that presentation and it, that? It involved? looked good. It really was beautiful. I mean, outside of, the, yeah, yeah, outside of the, outside of the really it was shot well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to bring up one thing. I think it, it, the mayor. Uh, I don't know if he's yelling at his people who Bill chartered in those uh, that great email exchange story. But on the whole, I think he comes off really badly in this. After okay. the first couple, okay. I said, "Oh, this is just a nonsense. Too favorable to him." But when you hear him using that crude language to two young two people who are starting a organic garden farm yeah. in Englewood. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You know, where he shows off that he had raised a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. 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 You got your hundred grand. Now get the fuck out of yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. That's appalling to me. Yeah. I know people swear, but he's the mayor of the city of Chicago. Yeah. And also I, I maintain that I don't know what someone in Omaha is thinking, but it shows a guy who doesn't seem to have a real clue yeah. about what Chicago is. Right. Yeah. Right. It shows him to be, can't fool us, this playful guy peeking in schoolrooms yeah. and laughing with yeah, the yeah, children. Yeah. Yeah. And the violence. Yeah. Yeah. It shows a guy out of control in my mind. So, so the same question, I think you had one of these questions about well, we find out what happens to these people afterwards. Yeah. Like the kid yeah. that was I mean, we were introduced to so Martell, many people. Yeah, that know, who, and you said it was one of those things where yeah. you hugged the kid and you know just kind of like that high five. Mentality. We should say that he was it was an intern. He was, he was, he was, was an, an intern, intern yeah. into yeah. the he mayor's office. And, yeah, you know, yeah. and so it's kind of like a basketball game. Yeah. And it basketball. seemed that one of those setup kind of things. You know, here's this kid and. He's totally, got, because I've watched so much of this. The line he says to the car he goes, you know, I'm I'm bringing you along. In essence, I'm bringing you along so far, I'm going to have to get you my brother to be your agent. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, what are you, nuts? Yeah. The mayor comes off kind of like nuts yeah, in this yeah. thing. Speaking of agents, by the way, it, is it plausible that the producers are saying, yeah, the William Morris agency, headed by the mayor's brother, 
represents us, but not in this project, but they will represent us after this project yeah, is yeah. over. That was like an important <laughs> question I wanted to answer. Right? <laughs> okay, fine, they're not in this project. Are you ever gonna work with them again? Well, yeah, sure, yeah, on big right. projects we will. Except for this project, yeah. right? You know, I have to say, I, I wrote a, an email to a friend of mine after I watched the first show, and I said my immediate reaction was that the script was written by Tara Cooper. And then I thought about it for a minute and said, no, there's no way. Those people are way better than this. They're more professional. Tara Cooper would never have written the script because the mayor looks kind of goofy, like yeah. like like it's like he's kind of parachuted into the situation. Well, and I'll play down. I mean, I don't know what Rom Rom should watch it. I think so that he can call his mm -hmm. brother and mm -hmm. say, "What the hell did your people do here? I look like an idiot. Mm -hmm. I look like a guy yeah. out of control running a city that is even out of control." I, I think what it, it, it's it's really weird because he. He comes off in some ways as a as a an interesting and likable guy. I couldn't help but think, could you imagine if they had f helicoptered in and done the same thing with Richard Daly? I mean, it would have been a very different mm -hmm. would have been a very different mm -hmm. series. Um, you know, better and worse in some ways. I don't think that the creators of this program knew who their audience was. Do you think it had any impact nationally? Because we're, we're, there you we're, go, right. we're well, here in Chicago, and we know sort of the ins and outs. But yeah. if you're if you live in Cleveland, maybe that's a bad example. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> well, what's interesting in, in getting the feedback I've gotten from writing about this is there seems to be two different reactions. There's the Chicago reaction. Mm -hmm. There's a the reaction elsewhere. And people outside of Chicago, I think, see all the crime and violence, and they attribute that to the mayor. And they say, well, here's a guy. Even though there's lots of controlled scenes that make him look good, uh, it's contrasted against the violence, and they they attribute that to him. Whereas people in Chicago know, unfortunately, the violence, mm -hmm. a lot of things that are shown in the series have been an issue mm -hmm. that exactly. far right. predates right. Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Yeah. Right. And so Chicagoans don't correlate that with Rahm. They correlate uh, hmm. the, the image that Rahm has on the show with what they see, which is him in the classroom with the kids, yeah. him out on a recess playing with the parachute, you know, yeah, yeah. all the really rosy scenarios they put him in. So is this going to go, is this going to be a uh, Put out internationally on CNN. That was their thought before it uh, before it aired. Now who knows? With I mean, the it, numbers it not being so hot. Depends what plane is crashed and what. Uh, yeah, CNN <laughs> that's true. CNN all their, doesn't do that anymore. All their right? time to. Right. I don't know how it plays nationally. I, maybe they jam it up and make a two-hour show out of it. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't. But I, the question is, I, I mean, <laughs> to, to build on Richard's question, will this show have legs? Will Will people be talking about this show five, ten, thirty years from now? Will it, Will it may be a reference no. point? I, I I don't think so. In, in one of my posts, I wrote how the show is. Uh, presenting the situations that will make some nice coffee talk or some nice conversations on the elevator or at the mm -hmm. water cooler the next day or during lunch mm -hmm. but then you just kind of forget about it because the show doesn't connect viewers emotionally with what's happening there, there's a distance a that, that yeah. it, it keeps us distance from what's happening yeah. because of what we said earlier it calms us but at the same time yeah it seems like this other Chicago one because yeah. as a native Chicagoan that's not I know that there's yeah. missing yeah. stories and then people who live outside of it think oh that's what it is you know Ray I had never thought about it until you said that that way but there's a cold distance mm -hmm. in this thing it's like it, for all of the hundreds or whatever thousands of hours of stuff a thousand, that, a thousand yeah. hours yeah. that they yeah. shot and it's and they were everywhere there's still a sense of being like at least 10 feet off the ground not really getting into yeah. the real stories what's well, the way they did that crazy map every once yeah. in a while yeah. to yeah. show you yeah. where you were yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. here roseland yeah. yeah and the next thing was like downtown and you're yeah. like wow where, where's all this other place yeah. what's this yeah. big blob <laughs> called chicago here so we we have all these journalists here you uh, as i said media creatures um we kind of all agree that this probably wasn't what we would call a documentary. Was it journalism? Um, I should say that I heard Mark Kunkel, did the narration and the mm -hmm. writing, um, on our WBEZ show, not my show, but when he was on, he called it uh, reality journalism. He was trying to find a way to describe it at the end of the show, and he said several things at the end of the day. I think he, I think he arrived at the mm -hmm. description, reality journalism, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that fits or what, but I think that's what he said. Does well, that ring a bell with anybody? I, I think journalism is a hard thing to define these days. And when I tr explain it to young people, we have to think about it in um, old school terms of, you know, here's both sides, let the reader make up his or her mind. We have editorials. Um, and now we have this 
the kind of mesh of it can be a little bit of everything. It can mm -hmm. be editorial. It can be uh, presenting both sides. Um, it can be a little bit made up, apparently. Um, so I, I think it's it's a representation of what 21st century journalism can be, mm. and it shows us why we need to be careful with what the information that we get this century. So then it could be what he said. Well, think? I think that's what it, that, that's what appealed to Mark uh, Conkle, who writes for, used to run a Pulitzer Prize at the Sun Times, and now writes for DNA Info. Uh, he asked me to be part of, you know, th there there are a number of setups in this thing. Eric yeah. Zorn and Tony Fitzpatrick and Neil Steinberg in the bookseller bookstore, which got this much airtime. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and I refused. They sent a crew here when Mark was on the show once. They actually had a guy sitting there watching. Yeah. Yeah. They had a lot of crews on the ground. A thousand hours is a lot of yeah. is a lot of film to shoot. Uh, it's some kind of bizarre new hybrid. One of the things that mm. Mark said appealed to him about it was it's a new way of storytelling. Mm. You know, that's that's all well and good, but you better define what kind of storytelling yeah, you're yeah. doing. Is there, yeah. as Bill will tell you, it is uh, also very hard to be yeah. in journalism these yeah. days. Yeah. And it's, is it reporting, Bill? Uh, to me, I, you know, maybe I'm old school, but this but you're old school. Jeez. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, I may be young. I think I have more. You're young old school. school. You're old young school old mentality. School. Thank right? God. He works for an old uh, school thank organization. God. Uh, you know, I still drink old style at the Billy Goat, even though I'm a younger guy. Yeah. Uh, and I, to me, it's not journalism. Yeah. You know, when you're when you're writing emails to a major subject of your show, and you're telling them how great you're going to make them look, and oh, we need you here at this time, and we need you to do this and that. That's not journalism. You know, when Why you actually not? read those emails, and I, I look at them. You really just go, I can't believe they did that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, really. Yeah, and let yeah. me ask you one other question. It has to do with... We've got it like 30 seconds left. Some go people, ahead. Some people assume this had something to do with promoting his image for his next campaign. Political. Yes, no. Doesn't make any difference. All I have to say is good luck with your next campaign <laughs> if you're going to use this thing to, to It turned out not image. to be yeah. an infomercial for Rahm Emanuel is what yeah. you say. Guys, I've just thoroughly enjoyed this. And, and boy, could we go on for another hour on this one, huh? Bill Ruther, thanks very much. Sure, Tribune wrote, wrote the story, really worth looking up. Uh, it, it's a fascinating story about the inside of how this happened. Ray Salazar, White Rhino, thank uh, you. teacher, thanks for being here with us again. Hope you come back again some other time. Thank you. I'll be back. Okay, good. Two Richard years. Steele, <laughs> WBEZ in Pocolo. I'll be Pocolo, back when he comes back. And he'll be back. <laughs> 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 and his name, by the way, is uh, Rick Kogan. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Rick, thanks so much. You've been watching Chicago Newsroom. <clears throat> it's a community service of Can TV. I'm choked up. I'm so uh, impressed with these guys. Of course, you can watch us here on Can TV anytime you like, but you can also check us out on uh, iTunes. You can subscribe, or you can watch us right here on YouTube any old time you like, and I hope you will do exactly that. I'm Ken Davis. We'll be back next week with another show on some other topic, so you'll have to check us out and find out what it is. Thanks for watching. Bye.